Greetings and welcome to St. Mary's Church and our celebration of the first Sunday of Lent. My name is Shirley Cirillo. We undergo numerous times of testing and pain in our lives. As we turn to the Lord, we trust that filled with the Holy Spirit, we will be inspired and empowered in our moment of need. For our faith in God enables us to face these times of stress, looking to the Lord for the grace we need to handle trauma, resist temptation, and hope for eternal life. Gather together, we turn to the Lord with confidence and trust as we celebrate this liturgy. With the lifting of the New York State mask mandate and the latest guidance from the CDC, we ask that you assist us in the following ways. The wearing of masks, of face masks, is not currently required, but we respect those who, based on their circumstances, choose to continue to wear a mask. Those seated in the social distancing sections are required to keep your mouth and nose covered throughout mass. At communion time, please follow the direction of the designated ministers in processing up to receive communion in the hand. If you are wearing a mask, please wait to lower your mask until you have received communion and stepped several feet from the minister. Thank you for following these simple requests to create an environment in which hopefully everyone will feel welcome and safe. Our presider today is Father John. Please stand for the entrance procession. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct, conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, The priest shall receive the basket from you and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Aramean who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm, with terrifying power, with signs and wonders. And bringing us into this country, he gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the products of the soil which you, O Lord, have given me. And having set them before the Lord your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord. Call on the Lord who will never 
never forsake you. God will bring you salvation and joy. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, I pray. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does Scripture say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with a heart and so is justified and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. For the scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. We do not live on bread alone, but we live on every word from our God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, Command the stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil, when the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord.
During Lent, we get to work employing the traditional Lenten practices of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving to remove whatever obstacles get in the way of our living wholeheartedly as disciples of Jesus Christ. And having done that work, we will be prepared and stand ready to wholeheartedly renew our baptismal promises at Easter, boldly proclaiming our faith in the triune God and all that that entails. That was the charge we received as ashes were applied to our forehead this last Wednesday, and we heard those words, repent and believe in the gospel. If you are anything like me, those obstacles seem more persistent and tempting than we might like to admit. I can start off Lent with all sorts of good intentions and even take some positive steps to remove those obstacles, only to be tripped up and fall back into them. In the process, I can end up feeling defeated and disheartened. So what does it mean for us on this first Sunday of Lent to hear that after 40 days of fasting from food and human companionship, Jesus easily overcame the devil and his temptations? Cynically, we may say to ourselves, of course Jesus did that. He is perfect, like us human beings in every way but sin. After all, as the Son of God, he he had everything he needs to overcome the devil and his temptations. And yet, that is just it. So do we. What do I mean? Surely I'm not suggesting that we fall into and repeat the original sin of Adam and Eve by imagining that we are equals of God. Yet we can consider how much our situation is like that of Jesus after his baptism, when the Holy Spirit led him into the desert wilderness to fast for 40 days and be tempted by the devil. Think back with me to the end of the Christmas season and the feast of the baptism of the Lord some two months ago. After coming up out of the water, Jesus sees the Holy Spirit descend on him and hears a voice from heaven declare, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. Who of us don't hunger and ache at some point in our lives to see and hear the same thing from our parent or from a significant adult in our lives, let alone God? Wouldn't we want to have a little time to bask in that praise and affirmation? I know I would. And how many times in our life do we experience something like Peter? who no sooner is praised for declaring that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, than he quickly stumbles from such a lofty estimation to hear Jesus say to him, Get behind me, Satan. Talk about a fall from grace. But that apparent rapid change in fortunes is what happens to Jesus in our gospel today. For right after being baptized by John, filled with the Holy Spirit, in hearing those wonderful words of God, Jesus returns and is led by that same Holy Spirit dwelling within him into the desert wilderness. There he fasts from food and human companionship for 40 days, and then he faces and overcomes the devil and his temptations. Yet, how does Jesus do it? We would, I would suggest that The 40 days of fasting from food and human companionship removes all the distractions, whatever is not God, from Jesus' life, such that Jesus becomes more aware of and attuned to his relationship with God. All those things that we fill our lives with and come to rely on just to get by are taken away. While we had a taste of fasting on Ash Wednesday, and we may have struggled with a lack of human companionship amid that initial pandemic shutdown in 2020, the harder part may have been the loss of all the distractions that we were used to having in our lives. I, for one, must admit that I did not look at that time as an opportunity to grow in my relationship with God and live wholeheartedly as a disciple of Jesus Christ. The key for Jesus seems to be his being filled with the Holy Spirit and allowing that Spirit to lead him. 
In fact, his hunger is symbolic of Jesus being emptied of everything but the Holy Spirit that fills him. As such, Jesus is filled with God alone, unaware of his oneness with God. Grounded, grounded in this way, Jesus easily overcomes the devil and his temptations. In the first temptation, the devil appear, appeals to Jesus in his human nature in terms of that hunger. Yet simultaneously, the devil recognizes Jesus' divine nature, encouraging him to grasp at his divinity and show his stuff. In many ways, this parallels the appeal that the devil made to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Eat this appealing but forbid forbidden fruit, and you will become like God. Attuned with the Holy Spirit, Jesus quickly dispatches the devil's temptation quoting a line from the book of Deuteronomy. While we only hear the first part, clearly the second part is implied. One does not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. And so doing, Jesus is affirming with these words his own lived experience over the last 40 days of fasting in the desert wilderness. What has sustained him are the words of God that he heard along with the spirit that filled him at his baptism. He is also asserting that the fullness of life is not found in food and material sustenance, but in seeking to satisfy our intense hunger for God by consuming the very word of God. And we do just that when we participate fully, actively, and consciously in the celebration of the Mass. We gather together, forming the body of Christ, the Church, as we consume the Word of God, proclaimed and opened up for us in sacred scripture, and as we consume the body and blood of Christ in the Eucharist. In this way, we join Jesus in satisfying our hunger by enacting his words that overcome the devil and his temptations. We declare and demonstrate that we do not live on bread and material things alone, but live most fully in consuming and enacting the word of God in our daily lives. So in the first temptation, the devil goes after Jesus by appealing to his hunger and urging him to use his divine power to satisfy it. In the second temptation, the devil doubles down on the appeal to great power and glory, promising Jesus that he can deliver him all the kingdoms of the world if Jesus will just worship him. As to the devil's claim that all the kingdoms have been handed over to him, we need to look no further than to those in positions of power who focus on getting and maintaining power and glory by any means necessary. While it is easy to see it in historical figures like Hitler and Stalin, and perhaps impute it to someone like Putin, we cannot overlook the abuse of power exercised in the protection and of the power and glory of the Catholic Church in the child sex abuse crisis, or in our own individual abuse of power and authority as we lord it over others. For in each of those instances, power is exercised for selfish and self-centered reasons. Like the devil, it is all too easy for us to demand that others worship and serve us. But again, being filled with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, Jesus turns away from the devil and refutes his temptation by quoting the words of the book of Deuteronomy. You shall worship the Lord your God. Him alone shall you serve. This calls us to the processes of simplifying and emptying that I've highlighted with regard to our theme of a simple, simple Lent. We seek to strip away all that is not God or of God. Obviously, that entails turning away from sin and vice to more fully embrace the works of mercy and virtue. Yet it, we also seek to shed those distractions that all too easily fill our lives, but leave us feeling empty, inadequate, hungry for more. Just like an excess of junk food can destroy our diet and leave us craving more. Seemingly harmless diversions can grow to consume more of our time, talent, and treasure 
in ways that block and stunt our spiritual health and progress. In that regard, I've chosen to fast from YouTube videos for Lent because I became aware of how that diversion was consuming too much of me. In its place, I've turned to light reading and moments of reflection, using part of the time to engage the material in our parish Lenten reflection booklet. In the third and final temptation, the devil plays off our inherent human fear of death to test Jesus, making Jesus stand on the parapet of the temple in Jerusalem, perched precariously above the ground. The devil challenges Jesus to throw himself down, trusting that God will fulfill the words in our responsorial psalm today and save Jesus. Placed in a similar stressful situation, fearing for our own personal safety and under heightened distress, we are tempted to grasp at anyone and anything that can save us. Cherry-picking phrases from the psalm, the devil twists God's reassuring words into something that can be tested and proven. Yet if we look at the words of God in the psalm, we note that God's promise promises to guard and support come to those who place their trust in God. It is not a question of putting that trust to test, but throw, by throwing ourselves down. For surely there are enough times in our life when we stumble and fall that we do not need to add to that by intentionally throwing ourselves down. And as the last lines of the psalm indicate, it is a matter of trusting God such that we, when we find ourselves in distress, we call upon and cling to God, knowing that God will deliver us from whatever we fear. As we prayed in the words of the Responsorial Psalm today, Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, I pray. Once again, filled with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, Jesus quickly dispatches the devil's temptation, quoting again a line from the book of Deuteronomy, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And Jesus repeatedly enacts those words of God throughout his life in ministry, but most clearly in his passion and crucifixion, when he commends his spirit into the hands of his Father as he takes his last breath on the cross. Having placed his trust in God in that moment of great distress, God delivers Jesus from death to life, and raises up him up to eternal glory. So as we go about our Lenten practices of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, are we ready to accept and demonstrate that like Jesus, in our own baptisms, we too were filled with the Holy Spirit and declared beloved children of God, so that inspired and empowered by the Spirit and those words of God, we too can turn away from the devil and his temptations stripping away sin and vice, but also those distractions that get in the way of our being who we are as baptized disciples of Jesus Christ. And at the same time, turning to God and fully embracing God's word and the life that our Lord has to share with us in Jesus Christ. In this way, passing through a 40-day period of fasting and preparation we will stand ready to wholeheartedly reaffirm our baptismal promises at Easter and live fully our life as disciples of Jesus Christ. Now let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Filled with the Holy Spirit, we journey with Christ in prayer, fasting, and service to others. Gathered together in his name, we now call upon God, placing before God our needs and the needs of our sisters and brothers. For the church, that filled with the Holy Spirit, we may empty our lives of that which is not God and avoid sin and temptation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all leaders, that they may resist the temptation to lord their power and authority over others and instead seek peace and justice for all, especially the poor and the weak. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Ukraine and all victims of war and violence, that they find refuge and strength in God and comfort and care from others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the various ministries in and outside our parish that emerging from the pandemic, they be renewed by both new and returning volunteers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing to receive the sacraments of initiation, that they may receive our support and God's grace as they grow in their knowledge and love of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those suffering from addiction, mental illness, and low self-esteem, that they may be guarded by angels in all of their ways. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, especially Nancy Howell and Julia Kaiser, that they may be delivered into the arms of our merciful God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for James and Shirley McGrath, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, guide us as we wander through the desert of temptation, lest we lose awareness of your constant presence and care, so that freed from all that leads us away from you, we may cling wholeheartedly to you who will deliver us from distress as we make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of our, this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observances, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that, celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves are turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that it converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. and resurrection you have set us free celebrating therefore the memorial of the death and resurrection of your son who left us this pledge of his love we offer you what you have bestowed on us the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation holy father we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your son and in this saving banquet Gracious to, graciously to endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all your saints, 
with your brothers and sister with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity and a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your grace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our lord through him and with him and in him o god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Yes, Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Abraham, wandering through this restless land, hold God's promise, God's demand. this face clouds and voices prophets place cross of Jesus all embrace but you that tree, even Adam, you and me, gather here we the world draw ever near Christ's own blood this cup so dear our thirst thus is justice here rehearsed night keep the fast to clear our sight share our goods to set things right
Let us pray. Renew now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcement. I forgot to do the spiritual communion prayer for those who were joining, joining us over the internet. So let us pray together. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are present in the celebration of the Eucharist, the sacrament of your love for all people. I love you above all things and a desire to receive you into my heart and into my soul. Since I am unable to receive your sacred body and blood in the sacrament of the Eucharist today, please come into my heart in a spiritual way. Deepen my awareness of your presence in me and the world around me. Unite in me more fully to you and your holy people. Embrace us all until we are gathered again around the table of your word and sacrament. And help me to remember that wherever I am, I am never separated from you. Amen. Today is the third in a series of opportunities to participate in the synodal process at 1.15 p.m. following the 12 noon mass in the parish office at Blessed Sacrament. On your way out of church today, please consider picking up a number of Lenten resources, including our Lenten flyer, our parish Lenten reflection booklet, a wallet-sized card to prompt and aid your entry into a simple Lent, and the Catholic Relief Services Operation Rice Bowl materials. This afternoon and Monday evening, we are offering additional confession times, examinations of conscience for, conscience for adults, youth, and children, along with a flyer encouraging participation and reviewing how to go to confession, are available to help you prepare to celebrate the sacrament of penance and reconciliation. Thank you, and please stand. The Lord be with you. Yes, sir. Bow your heads in prayer. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.